I guess we'll just kind of get started here. Let's let's have some fun. Okay. I'm going to show you I have made this journal. I'm going to try to zoom in. Here we go. So I made this little journal. I guess it's called an album, mini album. I used a tutorial on it from a uh, Lyric Lover uh, Crafts, Lyric Lover Crafts YouTube, um, Amber. And I used uh, actually some very old scrapbook paper that I have in a pad from somewhere, probably Michael's or Hobby Lobby. And I just loved it because it had this uh, vintage look to it, but it also has a lot of sewing. I love anything that has to do with sewing or crafting. So um, I love that this paper has measuring tapes and sewing machines and dresses and really fun stuff. So, okay, so here we go. So I just decorated the front. This is a die cut. Um, I don't remember whose it is and some ephemera that I had. And then I made a little pocket. This was actually a card that I had and I just added the thing to the front. I love doing the little, the little um, thumb punch thumb notch with my half with my circle punch I haven't added any pictures to this yet but you know I don't have any pictures so this is just a, a journal to be a, a album to be an album added some little ephemera there's these little pockets this was the one that was the album using chipboard in the background at, that you cover and I think it used single-sided paper and uh, multiple sheets so you can have a whole bunch of different uh, different designs so there's pockets on each side I love the the ladies and then I stuffed a bunch of ephemera in here this one is a girl with some with butterfly wings that I added I just found all my old ephemera pieces and just kind of stuck them in here because that was kind of thought that would be fun thank you thanks michelle it's nice to see you on here okay so then um here's some tags i made a tag this is actually just a card um index card that i painted a long time ago and i cut it in the shape of a tag here's one of the tim holtz dolls just some random ephemera this is a painted tag i have like a whole jar of just these painted tags that I made a long time ago from random time when I was learning about painting and playing and so I just kept them onto the side and so I just put that in there this is actually a playing card thumb punch again it's just literally a circle punch that you just cut only about half of it and then a couple of pieces that I just stuck in there and I glued it down and I believe I used the art glitter glue in my little, uh, just like Amber says in her thing, she has the little, I have the precision glue um, bottles and I do have these in my store and they're pretty cool. They, they work really well. I have the art glitter glue bottle and um, I could not get the metal tip to actually fit on the top or to get it to actually dispense properly. So when you put it in here, it works really well. So um, that's what I just decided to keep doing to do it that way um and I also have this other kind of I'm learning about glues because I'm not really I don't really paper craft a lot but I'm learning about paper crafting so I have this PPA project paper adhesive glue that um is in the store and um it it's made for using for paper mixed media all kinds of different things so um I used that last night on my other journal that I'm going to show you here in a minute this is just a little, um, I guess they call that a tech spot where you just glue a corner of the picture so that you can slip something in there behind it. I have some decorative different paper clips that I found. So I clipped that on there and put it in the pocket and lots of book pages and ephemera, just a fun way to use up a bunch of book papers and ephemera. So, and then I like, even though I accidentally cut her head off on the back, I, um, I do like this paper. So I used, whenever I cut, following that tutorial, um, 
I cut the pages to go around the pages and then I used the scraps to cut the pockets. And she used chipboard, which I have packs of six by six chipboard and I did not even know what you would do with six by six chipboard, but apparently you can make albums with it. Um, so I have already pre-cut chipboard in the store. I have six by six and 12 by 12, but I actually just used the cardboard pieces from inside a whole bunch of other packaging that I had saved because I call myself a paper magpie, a crafty magpie, and I just love to save things. It's not shiny, but it's something that I just, I squirrel it away. So um, I pulled out my bucket, my box that I have, which has a whole bunch of paper. Um, a lot of times these, the packaging in here, this one doesn't, isn't a good example, but a piece of cardboard behind um, every, Thing that it had in the in the packaging so I just save the packaging the cardboard Let's see like this one it's kind of this is kind of like a heavy card stock and so this could be used but um, this was actually in here is actually cart more like cardboard but it's all covered up because it's covered with paper now so yeah I use some paper and so there's my journal I like that one I don't know what I'm gonna do with it yet I might send it to somebody I don't know um, here's my other journal I just made. Uh, this one's kind of funny. So I, um, actually follow this other person called Robin Marie and, um, she does amazing work and I love her art and her junk journals and everything that she makes. And so I was watching a video. She sent a video out to her subscribers on how to make binder clips, decorated binder clips and, she had a journal that was made out of a book and old papers. And so um, I thought she said she had actually has a free class on her website. That's how to make this same journal. So I followed her um, free class and it turned out she used a book. And I think I actually glued all mine in upside down. I don't know. But um, I had this book. It was a it was a book that I took the pages out of. And a long time ago when I was first learning how to do mixed media things and I actually took my some pattern paper tissue and I just glued it on I didn't know what I was doing I collaged it all on top of there but all the guts were out of the book and then on the inside of the book I covered it with music paper and so um, I had this empty book cover that just I had taken the pages out so I could use them for tea dyeing or coffee dyeing practice and um, I had this cover and I when I saw her that she had this tutorial using a book, I was like, that's perfect. So I followed her tutorial using um, using wet uh, water activated tape, which I had to order, and then um, putting the pages together and I worked on it over a few nights and it's got some, it's got all random papers in it that I've painted and these this was a coffee dye one and just, I pulled a whole bunch of different papers from my stash of papers and it felt kind of neat to be able to make a book that didn't require sewing even though I do like stitching the binding down in for my books but it was kind of fun to just make a book that could just be um, random like this so just random pages um, from whatever you know this one's like a Mad Libs which I think is fun this is from a book and so some of this is coffee dyed paper and painting paper left over. This was from my yellow experiment earlier in the month. So those are that's my junkie journal that I'm going to be putting some paint. And then I'm just going to start throwing paint on it soon. Um, a fun envelope that was the center of my of that section. This is a bag from Hallmark. Had pretty design on it. So. Um, so that, that's pretty cool. I think you guys like it too. See a lot of hearts. Yay. So um, I really like having it be ripped and torn. So I might just have, might start ripping some of the pages too. So don't throw things away. Like I feel bad when I don't finish using my planners, but I realized I could just take the pages out and reuse them and, and they become bases for a junk journal. So um, I wish there was another name we could use besides junk journal, but I don't know what it would be called paper magpie journal <laughs> but uh so this is literally when I have a pick list for my store of 
products, I just set the paper to the side and I use it for painting when I want to clean my jelly plate off. And then this was a day that I was practicing. I put gesso on the paper and to see what kind of, what effect it would have with clear gesso. So, um, yep. And then I think some of it got glued together, but that's okay. It was kind of interesting learning how to use water activated tape. It feels very counterintuitive to put water on tape so that you can make it work as tape, which is really weird. But um, I bought the rolls were this, this that look like this, and there were three of them for $10, which I don't recommend this because it's not super wide. The kind that she used in her video was probably twice as wide as this, and she actually ended up cutting it. But at the, at the end, she uses the wider piece to go in the front and the back of the book. So um, I would recommend if you get a, to pay attention to the size that you're getting. So um, here's, I was playing the other day with coffee dyeing some paper, and it turns out that espresso is actually much better at, a, at dyeing paper um, than coffee. This is espresso, and I had a little syringe left over from way back my son is nine but this was from he, when he was little and we were we got the you get the syringe from the pharmacy to give them medicine and so I had one it's just a you know plastic syringe and I had it in my um drawer and I just pulled some of the uh um it was instant espresso had I mixed it actually with some coffee because the coffee was just not being dark enough so I just pulled some of the instant espresso liquid into the syringe and dripped it all over the paper and that's kind of the look that I got um and then the cool part is it was on the back of a page that was actually from an architecture book that book is really cool it has a lot of really cool pictures in it this is actually from Italy I went to Italy um on a trip and I bought something and they wrapped it in this pretty paper and I have a bunch of it and so that's now in my book And this is a piece I was playing with watercolor through a stencil. And this is actually on a parchment paper. So yeah, it's not it's, it's, uh, shiny on the other side. And there's some more. I was trying to do like circles and drips. Make it look like you had put your coffee cup down on the table and it dripped on it. Because you know everybody does that, right? And there's some of that. There's just a piece of scrapbook paper. So you can use absolutely any kind of paper in this, which was so fun. And there's the end. So it was really cool. I thought that was really neat. And it, it was a fun project to kind of work on while I was sitting at the coffee, at the dining table after dinner um, for a couple nights. Now, my family thinks I'm a little crazy, but, you know, um, that was pretty cool. All right. So there's my journal. Now, I think it would be fun to actually... Why don't we talk a little bit about doing some backgrounds? Um, so this week for the for the if you're not part of the or not aware of the um, PCL Color Challenge, Peacecraft Love Color Challenge, starting in April this month, I've chose a color to focus on, and I chose yellow. And so I have a hashtag. It's PCL Color Challenge, I think. And if you use anything with yellow, it doesn't matter what you use, paper, paint, fabric. I have some yellow fabric over here. You know, you could do a project that has fabric in it. I don't really care. It doesn't have to be something from my store. But if you use the hashtag PCL color challenge and tag me, please, so I know that you did it, um, then at the end of the month, I'm going to pull all of the names that have posted. And every time that you post, you'll get a um, to the tag, you'll get a, an entry. You can even email me or you can post it on Facebook. Um, if you, if you don't want to tag it on Instagram, but, um, just let me know that you're participating and, um, you can, uh, be entered to win a $25 gift certificate to my store at the end of the month. So if you want to join, I hope that you'll join in. You don't have to say anything specific to join, but I just, love to see my name pop up and people tagging me and saying, Hey, I'm participating in the yellow challenge. So I would just love to see what kind of things you guys are creating using yellow. Now, if you're using something from my store, even better, but if not, that's okay. So this week, what I've tried to do is, uh, I'm planning to do is a post about 
backgrounds. So the first part of the month, all we do, the hashtag is PCL color challenge. Very easy. PCL for Peace Craft Love color challenge. And it'll be the same every month. And somehow I'll figure out how to filter out the ones that are the yellow. You'll probably know all the yellow ones because they'll be yellow. So yeah. So um, yes. So just post to the tag, tag me as at Peace Craft Love. So I know. Thank you. Thank you, Eileen. Um, so that I know that you tag that you tagged it and then I'll just it's just so fun and then you can actually follow the tag and you can see what everybody else is making and it's kind of fun to connect to other people that are doing same doing things with our um with our tag isn't it so the first week it was just kind of go in and grab your supplies and that was the kind of photo prompt was what supplies are you using that are yellow what supplies do you have that are yellow maybe you have a spray or maybe you have um, this distress crayon, I don't know what to do with a distress crayon, but maybe that's what you have, right? And you want to play with it. Um, maybe you've never used it before because you just bought it because it was exciting to, to look at and now it's time to play with it. Um, so kind of gather your supplies. That was the first week. The second week was, um, my, my prompt was to make a color palette. So what I did was, well, more like swatches, palettes and swatches, right? So I went in and I, I, and I posted all of this on the blog, but um, I pulled all of my, my yellow products and I cut little square rectangle pieces of um, watercolor paper and I swatched all of my stuff out. Now, if swatching makes you tired or makes your eyes hurt, that's fine. You don't have to do it. It was just a thought. You know, I did, um, I sprayed. I have some of these sprays like this one. This one's fun because this is actually when you buy it it comes as a powder in the bottle and you have to put your own water in it, which I think is kind of neat because then you know that it's not being like, um, it's not evaporating or anything in the in the jar while it's sitting there. So um, so I, I went and I sprayed my different sprays on the paper and the gloss spray that's different than the, than the Fat Fabio spray or the Lindy stamp spray or even the distress spray. The dis distress spray is gonna react to water. So what I went back and I did too was I added, after I sprayed, I went and I actually added some water on it to see after it was dry, to see what would happen. And surprisingly, or not surprisingly, some of it is actually um, reactivates when you get, get it wet. Like distress, we knew that would happen. Um, the Lindy's, I didn't know that would happen, but it did. Uh, the gloss spray doesn't do anything because it's literally acrylic in a bottle. So it doesn't do anything once it's dry, it's done. So that's kind of nice to know that, right? Um, it also helps to know how you can apply other media on top of it. So if you apply a gloss spray first, you're putting down a layer of basically acrylic, which is kind of like a plastic. And, it, and you're not going to be able to apply another media over the top very easily. You can do it. It's just not going to be as easy. So yay. I'm glad that, that this sounds fun to you guys. I hope you'll you'll join in for the rest of the month. There's still plenty of time to join in. So I went through, I created swatches and um, of most of my stuff. I don't even think I did all of it, but I, I did most of it because I found more after I had finished. And then um, I put them in this sleeve because it's a baseball card sleeve. My son collects cards. And so he had an extra one. I said, hey, let me have this extra sleeve. He was like, okay. So I plan to do this for each month. Well, because I'm going to do this, you know, pick a new color every month. And so um, my plan is to every month get out all my color, all my supplies from that color, probably buy a whole bunch from my store because that's what I tend to do and to, for myself and um, jump in and figure out what they do. So like this one's a scribble stick, which is up here. And I love scribble sticks. And I know that they're wet, that they... Um, reactivate with water. The Neo Color too. I don't sell those, but I have one. And you know, I know that activates with water also. So I just wanted to um, have a quick reference of, and these are my acrylic colors. So just to have a quick reference of the different kinds of media that I have and the general colors that they are. Sometimes I, I wonder like, what does Ross Sienna really look like? Uh, Connie Lynn, you can have as many entries as you want. Just Post as many times as you want and tag me and I'll consider that an entry. So um, if you tag and use the hashtag and, and tag my account, I'll know that you're joining in and it'll be fun. So the more you post, the more entries you get. Okay. 
Um, and thank you for asking that. I also did my, um, this is my embossing powder. So I just scribbled some, actually used an um, pen, embossing ink pen, and just scribbled that on there. This one I used some actual ink. And then I heat it, heat, heated it up so I could see what kind of, what color I get. Okay. So that's what I did for that. So that was part two. This week is, the focus is to make some backgrounds. Um, so I'm going to grab, and you know, not like it really matters because I don't care. This is all just junk anyway. But um, that's what's fun about this, right? Is that it's just fun. I haven't put any gesso on this. I'll probably regret not using gesso, but we'll see. Um, so what I like to do is get my little, I don't know how much of this you're gonna be able to see. Maybe we'll just zoom out a little bit, okay. Um, I like to get my little gel plate. My gel plate is well loved. This is my gel press. It is a three by five. And it is <laughs> very loved. And I don't, I didn't label this one. I labeled my five by five. Um, I don't care that there's ink, that there's already paint on here because it will just come off and be grungy and it'll look kind of interesting. And I don't care that there's going to be blue on my, on my yellow background. Okay. So what I'll probably do is I'm going to take some Naples Yellow Deep from a, from Amsterdam, put that on my plate. Actually, I do usually take my plate out of the container. Grab my little brayer. Okay, so then I might just do something like that. Toss that on there with that. See? That's a pretty color. It's not very dark. Sometimes I'll just take my plate and I'll just kind of go... Oh, now it's a stamp. Look at that. And see, some of the blue came off. That's okay. That makes it more interesting. I like the I like the nozzles on these. Uh, it's very very handy to open it. Doot, doot, doot. You can't see that side. It's very hard to do the camera angles on this thing. The good part about acrylic paint is that it dries <laughs> very, very quickly. I don't know if that's just a Texas thing because of where I am. It's very dry here. Oh, it's actually very humid here, but um, today it's dry. So my acrylic paint, I usually have problems with my jelly plate just because my acrylic dries so quickly. It's hard to do anything really on it, but I learn. You can get extender mediums and things like that to make it go a little bit longer. Let's do some spray. Y'all can shout out something if you want me to do it. The problem with this is I tend to go overboard and then I just have a lot of yellow and it just looks like a mess. So I might have to get um, something else to be an accent color. I'm thinking purple because um, purple is a fun color. And when you use the acrylic, you need to have a place that you can wipe it. So you need to wipe it off to help it keep it from getting um messed up okay and then i have a stencil so that should be dry pretty quick i have a uh, air dryer gun too if i need to I'm trying to do this quick i don't want to be on here forever i know you guys have important things to do for the rest of the day i have to go pack orders because last thursday we had an incredible sale and i have a lot of orders to pack and I really appreciate all of those orders. So I'm gonna stand here, you know, drying paper for an hour. <laughs> How about we throw some eggplant on here? What do y'all think? Eggplant. See what it looks like when you spray through the eggplant. This kind of works really well. Um, oh, um, 
Dee Dee is doing a wet media challenge on her Instagram. She's playing with wet media this month. So this works really well for her challenge. So that kind of works. And then because there's already still ink up here, I will just flip this over. It's not ink, it's, it's paint. And I will just smush that on there. Get a different reverse look. Isn't that kind of cool? The eggplant is a very pretty, is a really cool uh, accent to that yellow. These are two colors I don't use a lot. So, you know, fun. Fun to play. What do you guys like to play with? What kind of... Um, Y'all are just listening though. That's cool. Um, this is scattered straw. This is distressed ink, which is funny. It's a re-inker. It's for, oh, sorry. It's the distress re-inker for the ink pad, but it's a really concentrated amount of ink. And so I've seen people use it a lot for, um, that's my timer, for, um, watercolor as, as liquid watercolor, which is really interesting. But, um, I also like to just randomly use it in, as reg regular ink, because <laughs> it's fun. Let's see what it'll do. And where's my spray, spray bottle? Somewhere, I, oh, there it is. And like I said, I haven't gestured this paper, so I don't know what will happen to it, because it's just plain, it's very, very light paper, so. It could do some really cool stuff, or it could completely dissolve. I have no clue. But I am one of those people that doesn't care. Right. Okay. Yay. Now... Here's a um, old book page that I have, so we can maybe put some old book paper on here. The good part about the book paper is it will any kind of collage that you do on top of something will help to make it a little more sturdy. And normally, I probably use matte medium. or gloss medium, or multi-matte medium, which I have to. Let me get that instead. I have it. This is Ranger multi-matte medium. What do I like to use for that? Oh. Toot, toot, toot. So, just a little bit of, ooh, this is fun. This is very thick. I haven't actually used this one before. So we just kind of put that on there, just like a decoupage. Okay. This is a coffee paper that I did. I know some people, it's hard because you don't really want to tear up old books and, and, you know, destroy that part of what we have, but this is like literally a math book, I guess. <laughs> it was an old math book. It had been retired. I got it at the in the in the discount section of the of half price books, so you know it was cheap. It was like probably a dollar. And I mean, if it doesn't if it doesn't get used in this way, it will never be used as a book as a math book anymore. So, you know, it's kind of like I feel like it's giving it a new purpose. Maybe that's just me justifying it. I don't know, but. Oh, kind of off the camera, sorry. Okay. Okay. And then, um, let's see. 
maybe we want to what else should we do more more paint more yellow bring that together who knows what to do with a distress crayon I don't know I think it's kind of like the um this page has so much yellow already it's kind of hard to see I think they're kind of like scribble sticks, but I don't, they feel kind of like scribble sticks. This is the only one I have. I haven't gotten the other colors yet. I don't think I actually did anything with my distressed crayon on my palette because I hadn't gotten it yet. I don't think. But yeah, it kind of blends with water. Well, that's good. I need more colors. <laughs> I think I need some, what do you think I need? Some aqua? That can hurt. Can that hurt? The cool part is, if this turns out to be a hot mess, I just paint over it later, right? It's just supposed to be a background. It's a nice color. I like that color. It goes well with the the yellow, don't you think? I think so. So I'm just taking the brayer and I got some on my palette over here. This is my gel plate. And I'm just using my my gel plate as a palette because when I'm done with it, I can just take it and smush it onto another. There, I like that a lot. Yeah, that's a lot better. Yellow is so bright. I'm just a blue person. That's just who I am. So I can get my other book. This is my other mop-up journal. And find a blank page. And you won't be able to see it. Hold on, let me move this one out of the way. My cat is sitting on my um, drying area. <laughs> So then I can open it to a new page in a different journal and just go plop and get some really pretty color that way. See? Isn't that fun? So even though my gel plate has a ton of old paint on there, it's not coming off. You can see that. It's just... It's staying on the plate because it's dried out. I could probably do some cleanup on this <laughs> at some point. Oh no, the cat. He's getting curious. So now that has to go someplace else to dry. So that's kind of where I'm going to... I think I, I'm good for a while here. Good morning. Yes, a journal to use the gel plate excess. Exactly. I didn't really think about it when I first started. I was like, oh, I have to have palette paper and I need to be fancy and then I'll have this palette paper. And you could use some really cool stuff with palette paper that you've already painted on, right? But when I use my gel plate, I have a five by, I have a three by set five. I have a five by seven. I have an eight by 10. And um, I use the 5x7 and the 3x5 a lot because um, I just grab them to put my paint on and then literally can just plop it over onto another thing. 
or you can just start using use it on paper and make some paper that you can um you can use it all the excess paint you can just use it on to make your own uh like more collage paper later um if you i have a video on my youtube of um how to clean your jelly plate with um with tape and then you end up with something that looks kind of like this so you know that could be really cool to put that in there um so that makes it a nice clean plate when you're done so yeah i really recommend the three by five the three by five i think or three by four the, the small size plate and i always store them uh with the acrylic even though they say don't or the acetate or whatever this stuff is um i use <laughs> this has so much paint on it it doesn't even stick anymore but um let me see what this official size is three by five yeah that's a three by five and I do store it usually with the cover with the thing on it in the in the clamshell and I try to store them up and down on a bookcase because it's less likely that they're going to get crushed by anything because they're up and down um and I just keep them definitely good use the journal that's a good idea all right so um yeah and it's they're fun to, fun to do so I always just grab it as my palette. Okay, so guys, here's a background to get us started and keep us going for next week. Yay, now I have something to blog about, woo -hoo. Um, So I hope that you'll come back next week. We're gonna do, I think, we'll continue this and um, we'll talk about focal points a little bit. Not that I'm very good at that, I'm really not. I really usually just like this look of craziness in the backgrounds and I have a lot of pages in my other journals that are like that. And um, But the idea is to continue the the plan for the month of the color challenge so I hope that you will um thank you thank you for your comment that you liked how I use the small brayer that's great um it's it's this is the um I have these I, I try to use stuff that I have in the store just so that you can go and and see um that you can get the same product. So, um, it's just a small brayer. I have a medium brayer in the store too. I bought those They're Dina Wakely, uh, brand. I also have just the Ranger ones, but, um, so the Dina Wakely ones are purple. doesn't matter. Once you put a lot of paint on them, you're not going to be able to see anything <laughs> anyway. But, um, yeah, this size is, is perfect size for the three by seven, uh, plate, but, or three by five, sorry, plate. It also works really well on, I mean, on any plate really. Um, and I like it a lot. So um, very handy to have that. And I like that it has the way the handle is. You can just hook it on something and keep it nearby. So that's very handy. Um, so next week we will, I think we'll continue. Oh, good. Go go play and have some fun and post some yellow things. I want to see what you guys what you guys post while I'm at the store filling my over 60 orders that everybody placed last Thursday during my crazy sale. Um, I will be looking at my Instagram and checking for when I get tagged and when people use that hashtag. So I will be looking forward to seeing what you guys create. And, um, and then I hope to see you next Tuesday at the same time, pretty much 10 o'clock and we'll just keep going or on Facebook on Friday at about probably nine or close to 10. Maybe I'll post an, I'll post a uh, notification as I did today for Instagram and you can actually sign up on my email. I have an email notification um, list if you want to sign up for that and, and be notified before Instagram or Facebook notifies you that, um, that I'm going live. So yay. Thank you very much for joining me, everybody. And I'm going to log off now. Have a great day. Bye.